Hi everyone, Shane Armin Rowe here, and today we're going to give you the Dolphin File Manager Tricks and Tips 2.0. A lot of the things in my previous video we're going to cover again, but I've got some new stuff, some extra stuff I want to show you, and we're going to do it without shooting it from my couch while I'm sick. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. The very first thing you should probably do as a new Steam Deck owner running Dolphin for the first time is to show hidden files. All of the tutorials, including my own, that are going to ask you to go to certain file locations to do certain things are probably going to be all inside of hidden folders inside the Steam Deck. So if you check mark this box, you'll suddenly see there's a whole lot of stuff you didn't previously have access to. Some of this stuff can be dangerous if you monkey with it, um, but obviously if you're following a tutorial or something like that, it's going to be fine for you. Now, one of the most common places you're going to actually be probably going in the tenure of your Steam Deck ownership is the Compat Data folder. That's located rather deeply buried, and we're going to sort by name by clicking that. We're going to go into Steam, uh, Steam Apps. Let's revert that back. Okay, so here's the Compat Data. Now, you can see the whole path. There's a breadcrumb trail type uh, listing at the top, and you can jump into various points of that breadcrumb trail without actually hitting this back button. These are sort of almost useless the way that this thing is set up over here with the breadcrumb trails. So Compat Data is a very, very common folder. This holds all your Proton prefixes. If you don't know what that means right now, don't worry about it. Someday you probably will need to be in here. So what we're going to do, instead of um, worrying about where this is all the time, now that we know where it is, we're just going to right click in here and add this to places. When we click add to places, it's going to add it to this list of places over here as commonly located locations. So we add this to places and now we can always get back to compat data anytime that we need to. Now we're going to use the little uh, carrot next to it and we're going to go back to Steam Apps, and we're also going to go to Shader Cache. This is another place that people tend to want to be or know where it is. So we're going to go ahead and add that to Places too. I always have these two locations in my Places panel. Now there's a lot of things in Places I really don't need. Right, Desktop is probably okay, but Documents? No, I'm going to hide that. I'm also going to hide Music. Probably don't have much use for that. I'm also going to hide Pictures. I'm going to hide videos. It doesn't mean those folders are gone. It just means that they're not going to show up in places anymore. And since I've got show all entries turned on, it's going to show even the hidden things. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that, and then they're all going to go away. Okay, so now we have a very succinct places. You'll also notice that as we start changing things in this main panel, these items start moving up, which is great because removable devices is all the way at the bottom. Chances are going to be likely you're going to want to get to this micro SD card far more frequently than you're going to want to go to your VAR folder or root FS. In fact, everything under devices, honestly, is kind of useless for me anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and right click that and hide the section devices. Okay, now I have my removable devices on the screen at all times, which is what I really, really want. I don't tend to use recent very often, but I'm going to leave it there. I almost never use this search for. So I'm going to go ahead and hide search for as well. Okay, so this is looking pretty good on the side. You might also notice that I'm leaving network here. Network allows you to find Samba shares and other devices that are on your network. If I go to shared folders, it's going to parse through my network and see if it can find other locations on my network that have access to a shared folder. Not a whole lot going on here, but a lot of people are looking for um, Samba shares and other things on your network. If you don't ever plan on accessing your network, go ahead and get rid of this too, right? Add more things to your places as you need them, that sort of thing. Um, if you have a lot of removable devices, extra hard drives, things like that that you're plugging in, you're going to want some space down here for that as well. Okay, so one of the things that you'll notice, and this is very, very useful, is unlike the file dialog box inside of the Steam Deck, the modified date here is actually accurate. So if you just installed a game and you're going to compat data to go in there and maybe copy some save files to it, you'll see that the modified will be today at the time that you were just working. So that's very useful in finding the most recently created compat data. This also would be something you might use for shader caches as well.
So a lot of times you're going to need the file path. So let's say that um, you have a non-steam gain. You're going to want to find, you're going to want to copy a full path to the clipboard. So let's go into, let's dig deep, 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 deep into this. And uh, let's see, let's see if I can find something worth getting into. Electronic Arts, that's good. EA Desktop, EA Desktop. Okay, so what you really need is you want to browse to this folder so that you can add the uh, EA Desktop launcher uh, to a non-Steam game, right? So there's a couple different ways you can do this. One, you could go up here and click in here and select all of this and hit copy. And then you're ready to copy that, uh, paste that clipboard into your add a non-Steam game, for example. You can also just right click the item and copy location, right? So if I went up here and I deleted everything and hit paste, you'll see that it's actually giving you the full path and the file name of what you're looking for. Very, very helpful when adding non-Steam games uh, or non-Steam apps to your Steam Deck. Now, for those of you who come from a more progressive file management uh, suite, such as Directory Opus, Norton Commander, or pretty much any other file manager on the planet, uh, that's not Windows Explorer, you're probably used to using something called dual pane or double windows or however you want to call it, two listers, double listers. It doesn't start off by default like that. You have one lister or one directory list based on wherever you are here. Now, you've probably figured out there's a split button over here that will allow you to put two locations in at once. Why would you want to do that? Usually, it's for uh, copying stuff from one folder to another. So, you download something and you want to copy it to your micro SD card, right? So now you could, you could, uh, without having split mode, right? This would be the hard way, right? Click, copy, go over here to your removable device, right? Click, paste one folder, right? You could do that. I mean, that's one way of doing it, but that's certainly, that's like, that's like the 1992 version of doing that, right? Um, you'll also notice there's no delete. We're going to fix that in a minute too. So we're going to go ahead and just select it. I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard for now, just to get rid of it. You'll also notice a trash folder was made. So something went to the trash, that, and I got a lot of stuff in the trash. You probably are wondering where the real delete is, right? So this is probably a good, as good a time as any to talk about that. So let me paste that folder back. Now, normally you'd right click and there'd be a delete here somewhere, but there's not, right? You'd select it, right click. There's a cut, there's a move to trash, and that's what the delete button did. But that's not what you're looking to do. I want to actually delete it. I want to bypass the trash and make it go bye-bye. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's turn that on. So let's go to the hamburger menu here, go to configure, go to dolphin, and context menu. Here are all the context menu items that are available, right? So let's go ahead and turn on delete. Aha. Now we right click, there's our delete. You could have also done a shift delete on the keyboard, but a lot of people don't have keyboards. So let's just go ahead and do that. It'll ask you if you're really, 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 really sure you're gonna hit delete and you're done. So now let's go back to our original thing. So we have two, we have two listers here. You should be able to right click and, and copy it over there. Copy it, paste it, move it. But I, I shouldn't have to do multiple commands for this. I mean, that's so archaic. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure this toolbar at the top, this one that has all of these things here along the top. We're gonna to right click in an empty area of the toolbar and click configure toolbars. Now from here, you can see the items that correspond. There's the back, there's the forward, there's a separator, right? Um, all that good stuff. So what we really wanna do here is maybe we'll put a separator here. Now actually we'll move it up one. Okay, so we want to put a separator between close and here. And then we're going to scroll down to our available actions and look for a copy to inactive split view. Great. How about move? I bet there's a move in here too. Move to inactive split view. Now, these are long, long text. Let's go ahead and apply. Now, look at this. You just lost like this panel up here. In fact, you don't even get to see really the location for this. So let's go ahead while we're here, we're gonna change the text and you know what? Um, we're gonna go ahead and hide the text and see what that looks like. Perfect, we'll do the other one. 
change text, hide text, apply. Ah, that's better. So now we have copy to inactive split and move to inactive split. And we can still see both of our locations. So now let's re review. We're going to select, well, we're going to select, right? And then we're going to hit copy to inactive split view. Perfect. Now we actually have a file manager that sort of behaves like a file manager that didn't come out in 1992. Now, one of the things that recently came up, right, was how do I select all? <laughs> There's literally no select all anywhere. You should be able to right click and say, select all. But for some reason, it's not there. There's no select all. Well, that's kind of creepy. Now you could, if you had a keyboard, of course, you know, control A still works to select all, but nobody wants to use a keyboard, that's fine. So, um, so how do we get a select all in here? One way of doing it, well, there's a couple of ways to do it. Um, so let's start off with one that might be useful to you. We're gonna right click, we're going to configure toolbars again, and we're going to see if there's a select all in here. There is, great, let's add that right below forward, so I'm gonna select forward, there's a little extra tip here for you, and hit select all, and it'll put it right underneath. And I am going to, because there's not a ton of space here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing, hide the text, apply. So now we've got a select all. So whatever lister or directory listing is uh, highlighted, right, and you can tell which one's highlighted by looking up here, it matches this, not download, so if I click downloads, it changes to downloads, and you can hit select all. That's one way of doing it. Now, here is the, this is the Windows Explorer crutch. If you're used to using Windows Explorer, you're probably used to using a set of standard Windows uh, menu items. You can do that here as well by clicking the hamburger menu, more, show menu bar with all actions. All of a sudden, this suddenly looks a lot more like Windows uh, File Manager, right? Or Windows Explorer. So now, of course, things that you would expect to see here, like select all or invert selection, copy to inactive split view, all of the things that you kind of wanted to have, you now have. Now, this is really a crutch, right? I mean, that's why it's not shown up front. It's probably better for you to take the things that you use the most and build your own file menu, give yourself more real estate. But for a lot of people, this is useful. Well, okay, that's great. Now, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> what do I do with that? Right-clicking and show menu bar will get rid of that guy. So now you're back to your nice, very sleek looking Dolphin file manager. All right, listen, uh, I appreciate watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. Was this helpful to you? Thanks always again so much for watching and take care.